I've been following My Friendly Neighborhood since around the time it got a demo on Steam, and now that the full game's out, I'm happy to report it's really good. And I'm not just saying that because DreadXP sent me a key for the game. I was aiming to buy the game regardless because that aforementioned demo absolutely sold me on it. If you have zero familiarity with My Friendly Neighborhood, think Resident Evil 1 Remake, but with puppets and its first person, which is right up my alley. Mostly because survival horror games make me feel funny. Especially survival horror games with interesting difficulties. And in the case of My Friendly Neighborhood, we have the unfriendly difficulty. That has a little bit more to it than just being generally harder. Also, get ready for a couple Resident Evil parallels. There's one huge difference between Unfriendly and every other difficulty in the game, and that's that there's almost no ammo for any of the weapons. So in Resident Evil terms, this is almost a knife-only run. And of course, Unfriendly is tied to a couple of achievements. There's Commando for just finishing the game on Unfriendly, and then Simply Stupendous for finishing the game on Unfriendly with an S rank. So we'll be going for those. My Friendly Neighborhood starts off way more chill than any game I think I've covered so far. No evil brain machines, no aliens, no zombies, no 10 minute long intro sequence where our wife is thrown from a helicopter, nothing. We're just a repairman named Gordon, sent to turn off the My Friendly Neighborhood broadcast array because it's mysteriously turned back on. And if we don't, we're gonna get fired. And it turns out that we can't get up to the array because the elevator that leads there is held shut by glue, I hope. I mean, the game says it's glue, but I'm not so sure. Okay. Then this happens. I I'm here to disconnect the antenna. I am Ricky the Sock. Your television will never be the same. We, hold on. Did you say disconnect the antenna? Yes. Oh my, no, 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 no. You mustn't do that. That would be a catastrophe. It's broadcasting over the news. The news? No, no, trust me. The antenna is just fine as it is. Doesn't need any disconnecting. Tell you what, you wait here, and I'll, and I'll, uh, I'll get you, I'll get you some. Oh, that wasn't pleasant. I'm gonna take a sec. Um, okay then. So forget all about the array and the glue. Let's go to stage four. Just so you're aware, the way that things are structured is that the cul-de-sac we pulled up in is essentially a hub to the different areas around the studio. Explore and complete one place, get access to a new one, rinse repeat until we can get up to the array. After following a puppet in a stage four and walking past a couple others, we get the wrench, our main way of fighting anything at all. Because like I said before, this is essentially melee only. I think next to the wrench is the only bullet you can find in this entire difficulty, besides the ammo already inside the pistol, and 10 shots in the safe room item box. This one's intended for unlocking the circle key though. But before we go get the pistol, let's talk about melee combat. <laughs> Jesus. As you could probably imagine, getting grabbed by a puppet is bad. They don't bite you like zombies or anything, they just hug you really tight. So if you're not big on affection, you might prefer the biting. Or you have a king. If we can't run and avoid them, the safest option is bashing them in the back of the head with a wrench. This usually stun locks them into a kill, just like real life. Except the puppets won't stay dead. After we kill a puppet, if we leave the room and come back, they'll be up and ready to hug again, unless we tape them down. Duct tape serves the same purpose as the lighter and kerosene from the Resident Evil remake. It completely takes the puppet out of play. That being said, there are more puppets in duct tape and it's best used in high traffic areas. And not every puppet will be facing away from us, so the next safest option is hitting them before they aggro. There's like a split second as they see us, if we hit them they'll get stunned. And then it's just best to run. Yeah, that's pretty much the extent of our combat options. Once we grab the pistol, we get another visit from Ricky. There you are. Now don't toddle off again. I've got some snackaroos waiting back in the lobby. He's serious about the snacks, by the way. If we go back to the lobby, there's some free stuff. There's also like just enough ammo to deal with these puppets that burst into the room. Hey, come on. Stop and think about it. Starting now. Stay back! Learn your alphabet, huh? So now we go get the circle key, and if you manage to use up all of your ammo at this point, you're soft locked. If not, this is all we use the pistol for. Otherwise, we use the key to get onto the actual My Friendly Neighborhood set. 
Each section of the lots has an area-specific puppet, and in the case of Stage 4, we have Pearl, who is essentially a big bird. Not like Big Bird Big Bird though, just like physically a big bird. As soon as we peek at Pearl, we can actually just turn around and leave the way we came in. Like we make a beeline straight out of the building for Gordon's truck. And then this happens. You know, I could just leave now. The next day I got called into the office because the network wasn't happy. Wanted to know why I hadn't finished the job. After a big long fight, I got fired. <laughs> And that's My Friendly Neighborhood. Okay, not really. That's just the worst ending, but for some reason, this pops the simply stupendous achievement. I have no idea if that's intentional or not, but it is kind of funny. Also, this game has a banger of a credit song, but we're gonna have to wait until we're actually done the game before we listen to that. And we'll be listening to the whole thing, so hold tight. Let's pretend that we didn't do any of that and head back to stage four now. There's an overarching puzzle for this entire area that involves finding letter blocks that we gotta put on a sign to spell the word neighbor. They're all over the set and mostly pretty easy to find. You just gotta be thorough. I'd say the main challenge here is that there are a lot of puppets running around. As easy as they are to kite or stunlock one-on-one, -on -one, they're not so great to deal with in groups. I think this cabby puppet is the worst one. Like, I have no idea if they have random health or if some are stronger than others or whatever. But these ones always seem to take an excessive beating before going down. Definitely worth taping these ones up. A handful of the items in the area are tied to this pizza time dial. Whatever the hand points at opens up a corresponding box somewhere on the set. One of the boxes has a pair of eyeglasses that belong to Pearl. And if we slap these on her face, we can have this little interaction with her. That's a good girl. There we go. See, nice and calm. It's been a long time since you saw yourself, huh? <laughs> Happens to all of us. We all get shocked sometimes when we look in the mirror. Each of these area-specific puppets have a thing you can do to make friends with them, and it makes them not actively try to hurt us anymore. One less thing to worry about. Okay, brace yourselves, because I'm about to show you the scariest part of this game. We're forced to spell neighbor the American way. Truly fucked up and depraved. But with that out of the way, we get a crank, and that lets us into the next area, the sewers. There we go. I'll let Gordon and Ricky give you the rundown. Unrelated. How do you feel about blood force head trauma? What is it this time? Well, Ray, of course. He's the best sort of monster janitor thing. But he's a little obsessed with uh, organic maintenance. Tends to pop out of pipes and clobber people with his wrench. Great. Are all of you puppets crazy? Well, Ray has always been a little grouchy, even before the shutdown. That's why they moved him down here. Only way out is by elevator, and he can't figure out how to use the buttons. Elevator. Got it. So Ray is the area-specific puppet for the sewers, and he's active immediately. In other difficulties, you need to find him before he gets all bonky, but not an unfriendly. He is easy enough to avoid, though. You just gotta give him the old bait and run. My Friendly Neighborhood's version of the shotgun is down here, and pretty much immediately accessible, but also completely useless because no ammo. So picking this up just takes up inventory space. It is fun to spin though. There's also a jump scare down here. Beyond that, there's an easy math puzzle right off the bat that opens up most of the rest of the sewer. While this place is kinda sprawling, it's not really that big in terms of things we need to do. There's just a lot of backtracking for this area's main objective. Collecting four different labeled plugs that need to be plugged in in the right order. Oh my god, just like Resident Evil 2. The plugs are in these little wall boxes, all of which we've already walked past to even get here. And each plug comes with a note telling us where they go so we're not using a whole lot of brain power here. Just dealing with puppets in some tight, stinky corridors. And if it ever gets too tight and too stinky, we can always just leave the room and come back to reset the puppets. Easy peasy. Okay, we're gonna just try to club them and run to see if we can get like the stun off on them. Yeah, yeah. 
Once all the plugs are in, we can get the bolt cutters, which I sincerely hope become a staple survival horror item in the same way Cranks have. Besides this, and a bunch of the recent Resident Evil games, I can only remember finding a pair in Amnesia the Bunker, which is super worth a play, by the way. With the bolt cutters, we get access to an elevator that takes us to the next area. You might have noticed that we didn't do anything to become friends with Ray, the area-specific puppet I talked about a little bit before. That's because we need a key and an item we can't get in this area to make him chill. The next area is a big old theater surrounded by a bunch of offices. The way out is locked and we need to find the key. Goblet is our next area-specific puppet here, and where there's normally only one that appears randomly in a couple of the rooms in easier difficulties, there's three now that are always active. Luckily, they're really easy to dodge. They just run in a straight line, so they're almost a non-problem. A new puppet type actually shows up here as well, and they're just these little guys that'll be clinging to walls and stuff. They go down in one hit and are pretty easily batted out of the air. <laughs> Besides that, we're looking for four masks to slap on some statues to open a door, one of which is in the aforementioned theater. Surely all of these puppets won't wake up once we grab the mask, right? Gonna ambush me, huh? At this point, you might have noticed that this run has been lacking a lot of me dying. Up until this point, I was doing pretty well for the most part. Any deaths I did have didn't really set me back too far, and I was getting maybe a little cocky. So my last save was at the start of the sewers, and like the older Resident Evil games, you can only save manually at save rooms with an item. There's no checkpoints. And on the way to go get one of the last masks I needed, well, I'm pretty sure you know where this is going. Don't grab me, don't grab me. No! Are you kidding me? We're all the way back. Okay, that might be our, our break point for this run today. So that was emotionally painful. On the bright side, when I made it back to that mask, thanks to someone in my chat, we found out that you can grab it through a wall. This is probably patched by now. Yeah, it doesn't look like you can... Oh, no, we had it. Gaming. There's also this really fun puzzle that's a mini board game against a puppet for a key which kind of made me want Inscription, but with my friendly neighborhood puppets. Also, you gotta play by the rules if you don't want to catch a puppet bitch slap. Hey, you can't do that. Oh, God damn it! I forgot. Guess I gotta follow the rules. After a little bit of backtracking down to the sewers with the key we get from the board game, we can find a film to play in the projector in the theater. And this is how we chill at Goblet. Mission Once we get all the masks together to get the key to get out of this place, we get our first boss fight of the game and I have no fucking idea what this thing is. My only guess is that maybe it's from the unfriendly neighborhood. <laughs> no, that's actually a place. All right, this thing sucks and blows puppets everywhere. Couldn't really tell you what else is going on here beyond I just mash left click and strafe. I'll speed this up for you. Okay, so now we're in the park and back lots. There's some dog puppets running around here that I'm not gonna show you me beating them with a wrench. But basically, we're after a bunch of chemicals to make something to finally dissolve the glue in the elevator that'll take us up to the array. There's like one puzzle in the park, but otherwise this part is pretty much 90% backtracking to areas around the studio we didn't have access to before. So really quickly here, while I ran around and got everything, I went back to the sewers to make pals with Ray. What do you want? Fix. Yeah, I fixed it. Ow. I, I, I just, look, when, when you've got a problem, you can't just clam up and start hitting everything with a wrench. That won't fix anything. And then I also got some dog food for the puppet dogs that I didn't know needed sustenance, which kind of raises questions about the puppets I never thought about until now. Do, uh, do, do, uh, do, do puppets shit? I'm sure it's all explained in the lore that I probably should have read. Anyways, we make the glue dissolver and we're finally headed up to the array. Finally, let's get this done. Where we've got one more area. I'm not sure what to call this place. It has a cardboardy crayony type thing going on and it's gotta be the second shortest area of the game, unless you're bad at cooking. But I mean, who doesn't know that cutting cheese with a chef's knife is how bananas are made? Are you stupid? We're looking for a bunch of pieces of cardboard to finish a painting and get out of here. There's a handful of enemies as well, but they're really easy to dodge. It's mostly just puzzles. I think I maybe spent 10 minutes in here tops. 
gaming. Once all the pieces are back together, we get to play the piano with Arnold. He's the area-specific puppet, but doesn't really do anything besides play the piano while we get all the cardboard. And we're using the word play very loosely here. I can't read music. <laughs> get off me, you torch! <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Now we're finally able to get to the array. What a thrill With darkness and silence through the night What a thrill I'm searching and I'll melt into you Come on, Gordon. We both know deep down you want to be friendly. Sorry, Ricky. And back down we go. Ready? Shoot! 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 This is the unfriendly neighborhood. No! Told ya it was a real place. We wanted to know what other shows had that we didn't. We'd never been allowed to watch television before, but after we got canceled, no one was around to stop us. Okay. So we turned on one of the old sets, expecting to see something amazing. But it wasn't amazing. It was... mean. It felt like we were dying, Gordon. We all got a little twisted then, but some of us... Unfortunately, this part is really short. There's some legitimately creepy puppets that chase us for like 10 seconds, and then the final boss fight. That's actually terrifying. Well, it's more of a final boss run, because we just run around until this gate opens, and then we can leave. I mean, I'm sure it's killable with a wrench, but I don't know. This works fine. It also goes on for a bit. When we're out of there, that's just about it. We have one thing left to do. Spit it out, Ricky. I was wondering if you'd help run our studio. What? See, everything's really old and falling apart. Really beyond our ability to care for. And on the personal side, I think it's obvious that we need a bit of a guiding hand. Are you kidding? Gordon, do I look like a sock that would kid? Fine. We'll give it a shot. Oh, Gordon, I'm so glad we will have such fun. I'm not living here, though. Well, we'll talk about that. And that's My Friendly Neighborhood. The achievement pops after the credits, and honestly, I didn't find Unfriendly that unfriendly. Not saying it was particularly friendly, though. Besides the one death that sent me back pretty far early on, I don't think I hit any major road bumps. I really enjoyed the game, especially casually, when I got to shoot everything. My only nitpick is that, as much as I liked the look of the cardboard crayon place, I kinda wish we had more time in the Unfriendly Neighborhood instead. If you like survival horror games, you're gonna like My Friendly Neighborhood. And if you ever wanna catch these playthroughs live, for now you can find me over at Twitch. TV slash anxiety. Thanks for watching, and as promised, here's the credits.
think I ended early. Can we uh, go back to the beginning? I'll take it, whatever. 